I'm in Pebble Beach, California for the Monterey Car Week and this is one of many videos that I'm making here because unlike last year, this year there are quite a few brands featuring electric vehicles and of course Byton is one of my favorite brands, really kind of became one of my favorite brands this year. I love them because of the innovation. I think they're one of the most innovative brands uh, this year. Um, and um, let's talk about a, a, another angle on this car because obviously as you can see this new K-Byte that they've unveiled in Shanghai, China and I was there for the unveiling is featuring this uh, uh, LiDARs here and also on the sides. Um, let's talk about this technology and what they believe the future is. All of this is coming up next. If this is your first time here and you're interested in staying up to date on what's going on in the world of electric cars, go ahead and click on that subscribe button down there so you don't miss anything moving forward. And of course, I want to mention that Evanex is the sponsor of this video and this channel, the aftermarket accessories for Tesla. Uh, there's a discount code in the description of this video, so go ahead and uh, uh, grab it uh, from there so you can save yourself a few bucks when you shop there. All right, uh, so autonomous technology. Level four is what Biden is aiming at with, as you can see, the sliders that are fixed on the roof of the car. They're retractable and so are the ones on the side. Um, interesting, interesting approach, uh, but I wanted to dive in a little bit more about, uh, about it. And I'm going to uh, uh, talk to Dave, who will give us a little bit more information and insight of, of what Biden's vision of autonomous technology is. So I've done so many segments on, on Biden, and I think my audience is very familiar with the car. But one thing I think we haven't covered yet is autonomous driving, because, you know, obviously, Obviously, we had a lot of setbacks in the news in that yeah. technology, uh, but you guys are pretty confident in uh, level four Absolutely. autonomy that's going to be featured in a car. And the latest, the, the, the four-door sedan, the key byte that you just came up with, um, features this very interesting LIDARs that are, you guys are not uh, hiding, really. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. Uh, tell us what technology you're using and why you're confident that you guys are going to be better than yep. a lot of others right now. Yep. Well, first thing to point out is, yeah, we're still autonomous driving optimists, okay? We, we're technologists, we believe in the technology. We're not underestimating the challenges. We've seen some of the difficulties some of our competitors have had this year. But we think level four, where the vehicle is gonna be driving itself most of the time, is gonna come earlier rather than later. Um, and one of the reasons we believe that is, you know, you can be extremist on level four. You can say, okay, the car driving itself all of the time, everywhere, in all conditions, yeah, that, that's a big ask. But the car driving itself 99% of the time, 99% of the world, when you don't have extreme weather conditions, that's going to happen sooner rather than later. That's going to happen tomorrow. And that's why we want to showcase the technology that will let us do that on this K-Byte concept car. Okay, so let's talk about the LiDARs because you guys decided to utilize this technology and as we know, Elon Musk has been pretty resistant to it, right? He believes that cameras and uh, radars uh, is, eno is enough to, to be fully autonomous. You guys are using cameras, uh, radars and LiDAR. Tell me what is it about the uh, 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 LiDAR technology that you believe uh, completes the set of imp imp the necessary tools to make it all work. Okay, so when we talk about level four autonomy, right, which is the vehicle driving itself most of the time, we need two things. We need range of vision. So we need the vehicle to be looking a long way down the road and we also need accuracy of vision. And the only technology at the moment that can do this is this so-called LiDAR, which is a kind of laser radar. Now, the technology is moving really, really, really fast. This vehicle is showcasing the technology that exists today in 2018. But these LiDAR sensors are going to get smaller, they're going to get a lot cheaper, and we believe it's the only technology now that can give the safety levels we need for true autonomous driving. Now, I know right now uh, lighters are limited, uh, for example, when there's like a sandstorm or, or a fog and everything. How do you solve that problem and do you? Uh, is, is that basically just a limitation you have to live with? Yeah, so two answers to that. First is there are a lot of companies working on this technology. It is getting better month on month, not year on year. But there may be a case, it's one of these cases, the edge case. There may be one day a year where the vehicle says, look, there's a freezing fog or there's a sandstorm boss take over the wheel okay so this is why we are not extremists on the position we think it working very well most of the time and taking a lot of the burden of that boring driving task that we all have to face that's going to come pretty soon again showcasing it on this car and you know one of the things we want to say here is 
these sensors give engineers and designers a challenge. Um, what do we do? Do we hide them away somewhere? Do we try and like kind of hide them behind some screens, or do we put them out there? And this car, we're pretty much saying we think these are cool, uh, and we think this could be part of the new design language, which is why you can see them proudly displayed on the roof of the car and in the front fenders. This does uh, kind of create also a challenge of aerodynamics, obviously, and the smaller they become, the the more smooth it can actually operate. So probably in the future that will be almost hidden. Well, why, why not? So we can see, for example, the interpretation we've done here is a deployable side LiDAR. So in this vehicle, the idea is that when you're not in an autonomous mode, it's smooth, it's flush, and then when we go into autonomous mode, it's retractable, it pops out. Now that presents plenty technical challenges, let me tell you, but um, we don't think we've got to hide it away behind the panels. We think these things can be attractive part of a new visual language, you know? So we're going to play with that over the next couple of the years when we get to the production version of this car. And, and just let's, uh, let's just be clear, what is it that the lighters do that the radars don't? It's simply a case of range. So radar, if you can imagine it, is a radio wave that's going out and bouncing back. And there are limits to how far that can work. It's maybe 50, 100, 150 yards. Whereas laser, it's a, la it's a laser light that can go hundreds of yards bounce off the target and come back because it's running at the speed of light and we can get the range we need while keeping really good definition you know if you can imagine it as a pair of eyes it can see you almost as perfectly as i can see you and i've got 2020 vision fair enough okay last question um you know a lot of companies are now uh thinking when they talk about autonomous driving uh you know waymo and uber um uh, well, you know, they, they're, they're hoping that their technology is more ready for the uh, for the uh, taxi services, essentially, uh, and not so much for people to use them in their own cars. Um, where do you see this technology, you know, evolving in the next few years? Is this going to be Uber-like services, uh, ride-sharing services, or do you think this is going to be available for you know regular drivers that can use it in their own cars? We, we see it developing in three spaces. Yeah, ride-sharing. Operators, like you've mentioned, there are huge ones also in China. Um, absolutely, that's going to be a key driver. But, you know, it's also going to be you and I. The, bo um, the boring task of navigating the 101 at rush hour, who wants to do that? So we believe that for the private owner, is also this is also a really valuable technology. The third space is actually commercial vehicles. Um, trucks, delivery vehicles, that's also going to be a key driver. All right. Well, I feel like I spend so much time with these cars that I really they're going to start uh, start charging me lease payments for them. Uh, I, I love the way it looks. I have to say this is my first was well, my second time, really. I think the first time I saw it at the unveiling in um, Shanghai. I uh, love it just as much in this light. This is a completely different light. It's not it's it's outside and the weather is beautiful here in uh, Pebble Beach. Um, I'm sure this is a conversation that we're going to continue having. Um, obviously, I'm rooting for these guys just like everybody to to get this technology right. Uh, uh, and on the right track as we know autonomous driving had a tough year so far um, and uh, I'm hoping it's going to change and, and of course changing public opinion once they have it set is very difficult so I, I hope Biden can be uh, um, on the front lines for that all right guys I'm going to move on ne to the next brand so if you want to see other videos from uh, from the Monterey Car Week uh, definitely check out uh, the video library on my channel um, they're definitely out there other than that see you next time and remember to stay charged